Happy Monday, everybody. We have a big week in store for you this week. So we've got today's Lighting Critique, but the big announcement is this Wednesday, we are going to be interviewing live Baby Yoda. Well, not exactly Baby Yoda. We're going to be interviewing one of the men who helped create Baby Yoda, a guy named Peter Weir Clark. He's an animatronics artist. He's a mechanical engineer. He's a fascinating dude who's worked on a ton of movies, including helped building the animatronic Baby Yoda you guys see in The Mandalorian. So we're very excited to meet him, hear about not only this project, other projects he's done, how he's working on. And the big thing about our interviews is, is we know that many of you um, are looking to get into this industry, so we always try and focus on how these extremely successful people uh, got started in the industry and how they got went from uh, dreaming of, of making cool stuff for films to actually doing it. So we're really excited to see Peter on Wednesday. That will be 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, New York time, 10 p.m. West Coast Pacific time. Please check uh, based on the 1 p.m. New York time to see what, what time that will be locally for you. Um, we will be doing it on our YouTube live channel. You can find the link in the announcement section of our Discord channel, and or you can just search for Academy of Animated Art on YouTube. Um, obviously, it'll be recorded on there, so if you're, if you're busy, if you're working, uh, and you can't make it, uh, it will be recorded. But once again, check it out. We're super, super, super excited to have Peter. Okay, let's get into today's uh, critique. So you got there's lots of images, tons of reference images, which is so cool. You guys have gone off the rails on reference, and I love it. Okay, let's start with Aaron B. So this is Aaron's submission of a sushi party. Let's take a look at uh, some of his reference. So really colorful, really poppy, um, backlit luminaries um, are, are, are all kind of the rage here. So, so I wanted to kind of um, uh, focus in on that aesthetic a little bit because it's, it's, there's something about it that's not quite transitioning through entirely into this. And that, and that is um, a very clear pinpoint of light back behind so there's like you can see the light sources here 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 the light source here in the middle there's you know like you can see the individual light sources and then there's like a ramping effect of of light to dark in between those in between the light sources coming around here as well as all of the other ones so like looking at this flower there's clearly a light source there and it dissipates as it goes out so i'm not quite sure exact and, and you can see that kind of time and time again throughout all this reference so i'm not quite certain where that's going to feed into yours um because it's a little bit different, but but the main gist of it is is that if you're going to be doing it like with with uh, the row with the the fish eggs here, you know it would be more like there would be a, a bright light source and then it would be kind of dissipate as you go off. Because I think you could, I think you could kind of hit up um, more of that look in those. Um, the one thing about that is. Well, the one thing I wouldn't match in your reference is the saturation point because I think you've got a really nice color scheme going on here. These greens, magentas, and blues are like really starting to fuse together nicely. Um, and same thing, oh, with the, the glowiness, it would be really helpful on these guys because these, these are feeling a little cut out, like they're not really interacting with the other environments, so it would feel real good there. Um, I love all the focus on this one character. I think that's great. It's like the god rays of the background are, are just kind of springing out of, of her. Um, some things to watch out for. Uh, we've got, again, there's a little bit too much, uh, blowout on the cucumber up there. It just, it, it, it would be nice to get a little, a little bit of a darker, richer, um, green value to kind of ground it up there and really kind of separate off from the super bright background. Um, I love the face. I think you got to watch out for the the eye right in here. This eyelash is getting very clipped out, very bright. But at the same time, I do think we could push a little bit more uh, value on the sushi roll of the face itself. That may actually come in specularity. Um, it may come in diffuse. You'll you, you can play around with that. But but as you push more light on there, you may need to tone down the white value uh, in the material on these guys to get that to help balance out. Um, and then additionally, uh, you may want to push the white value of the rice just a little bit brighter. So it's, it's just like, because white values, as you know, are super, super tricky. And it's just like a matter of balancing those in. So like getting this not quite to be that bright and that maybe to be just a touch brighter. And then um, for your character, just I would smooth out the geometry on that because I see a little faceting there on the edge. Uh, but, 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 but. This area here could use some attention. 
everything inside here. Um, it's just because like this object now has kind of a outline to it, but also like a haze over it. Um, and then this one is just kind of a abstract shape. And so I'd like to see a little bit more, um, you know, if this is in the foreground, it's not gonna have kind of light over top of it. Um, there's not a lot of space it looks like between these two. So I'd like to have a little bit, if it's gonna be closer to the front, let's darken it down to create a, um, a vignette with it more, um, more about darkening because again, it's close to the foreground and we need those black points to be a little bit lower. It's just because like this is looking a little, it's like distracting us a little bit um, uh, in terms of, of understanding the space and how we read depth in this scene. I do think you could push the depth of field a little bit more. I love I love seeing this here in the foreground. I, you could push it a little bit harder. And then you, these guys can even go out of focus back here a little bit because we're so shallow, we're so macro. I think you can kind of push that a little bit. But I'm loving the sparkles back there. I'm loving the lights. Um, these This crew up here might be getting a little bit saturated in, that, in the purple, but I think, um, but I like that they're kind of setting back into space. All right. So that's overall uh, what I think of, of what we've got here. It's really, really fun. It's really, really an energetic, exciting. This feels like a, this just feels like it would be a, a commercial in Japan. Um, like super excited, that level of energy, and you're able to get that from a still, which is really, really exciting. All right, Aaron T. This is uh, let's see. This is your previous one. Oh, wait, this is your previous one. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. This is your previous one, and then this is your updated one with the with the white plates. Um, I think the white plates look cool. They're just, they're a little too, like there's something about them that's a little bit too simple at this point. Like they're a little too white Lambert. And I'm wondering if maybe, you know, I looked at some reference uh, from white plates and you can kind of go one of two ways. You can either go like a super matte finish, kind of like what we're seeing here. Like that's kind of cool and modern and the shadows would be kind of super soft. Um, or you could go with a more ceramic-y plate and there would be more like reflections and, and refractions and stuff in there. Um, not refractions, reflections and like specular highlights in there. Um, I would, I think you should, you should choose one of those. And then also if you can, I would consider um, maybe putting some sort of color or something around the, the edge of this just to kind of give it a, a little bit more uh, decoration and a little bit more grounding. And so it just doesn't feel like a, a pure white kind of Lambert on top. Um, you could also adjust the color or maybe darken it down a little bit just because um, now in comparison to the rice, the rice feels a little bit gray and a little bit toned down, but you can mess around with that. If you wanna go back to the wood, that's fine too. But I was just 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 kind of playing this through a little bit. Um, so yeah, so I would, I would increase the value, especially on um, some of this rice in the fill area, like just just boost the gamma on the rice just a touch. I love the colors and pretty pinks. The subtlety in your shadows is gorgeous. Um, I love the shape that you're getting from that some of that stuff. Um, you you could you could work on um, kind of artistically sculpting, uh, like the way that all of these these all down here are in nice shadow. Um, figuring out how to craft more shadow onto the top and a little bit more light to like, let's say you want to kind of focus in on this region here, just kind of carving out more of a pocket of light around those, um, or like a pocket of light around here and a pocket of light around here. Um, because I love the way that these are setting back now. Um, and these back here too, it's just, there's a lot of everything else that's kind of in the sunlight. Um, that is, uh, blah, 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 blah. That, that's kind of, that's kind of our, our eyes moving around and kind of seeing a lot of different things. Additionally, I think you can you can bring the the level of the key light, like the height of the key light, down, um, because these all these guys are so close to the ground that some of that sometimes their faces um, get a little bit too much in dark in darkness. And I think if we lower the key light down, we can we can sneak some more light in there. Um, yeah, and then I would also for you, I would also work on uh, these orbs and kind of figure out. Because they're not bad right now, they're just a little simple. Um, they just feel like a blend shader has been applied. I would, because because a couple of them are so big, I would. I mean, if you want to remove them, that's fine, and then we can focus on other things. But if they're going to be in there, I think you should uh, try and make them a little bit either feel like fish eggs or um, maybe feel like a balloon or just something a little bit more 
uh, special or garnering the amount of screen space that they're taking up a little bit. But overall, this is looking really good. Let's look at uh, compared to your previous version. Yeah, do you see? I bet you, you know what? Like the rice, I bet, is the same value here as it is here, but because it's surrounded by white, it now feels darker and dingier. Um, so just something to keep in mind there, though. But super fun. This is looking great. You've got everything. Like the good thing is, is you've got everything in place. Um, it's just a matter of, of dialing in the look. Now, now you're doing the fun part. Now it's all lighting and fun. So... Um, yeah, let's take a stab at the next iteration. And I'll see what see what we get from there. So, but, but really, really good job, Andre. So big progress from your previous uh, version. Um, like outside, it's so much more depth and space and um, kind of richness out there. I love the specularity on his hair. Um, one thing about the outside, there's like a dark shape that's kind of kind of see it kind of running through there it's a little like it's a little distract i would like all of the values to never really get darker than what, like the browns that we're seeing in there um and and just because like outside is going to be um brighter than inside it's just like natural light is going to be much much brighter than than interior light so i would like to not only lift that dark value i would like to lift the overall exposure outside this window to be um, maybe like a stop or two above where the characters are. Let's see. Take down the saturation there. So it'd be a little bit more like in this realm. And then the characters can come back down. Because, like, again, if you're thinking about uh, light levels between interior and exterior spaces, exterior is always, always, always going to win. Um, and so seeing them kind of balance together um, isn't, doesn't totally, it, it reads as being like maybe like more, it feels more like a studio than a natural environment. So I would just push that outside a little bit brighter. Um, in terms of the interior space, now that we have. Okay, now that the outside has gotten, you know, because like where we, were, where we were before was it was more about the interior than the exterior. And even without this brightness, now it's just, it seems like there's more light coming in from the outside than there is on the interior. Um, we can start to emphasize that a little bit more. And, and by that, I mean, we can tone down the influence on some of these interior lights because right now they're kind of competing. So um, I would... Let's see, let me think about this. I would even consider, I can leave them on, but like, like really diminishing the influence on these lights so it's more about the light coming in through the window on the character and now they're getting like a little bit more rim and then all this is just kind of fill. And then um, like you won't see as much of, of this type of shadow on the wall as you'll see light coming in from, from the side and really like pushing back this way along you know like scraping along the wall that way um and then you can because right now like the the shape here of the light coming across here the shadow there this kind of triangle of brightness is creating a weird read on this wall over here so i would i would try and limit it to just be to to not feel these lights as much as again the the more powerful exterior light coming along this way because like i said once we make this brighter you're really going to want to feel the light coming down that way um i would take down the light considerably on this table and then i would soften um soften the shadow on the ground here Looking at this, yeah, I would start there and see where that takes us from there. I think that would be really good. And then you may need to, I would reduce um, the amount of bump we're seeing on the wall over here. I would make this a lot smoother because like this is a, um, it's like super crunchy right now. And I would just like what we're seeing in here is a little bit better. But like this level of contrast is a little bit high, so I would just I would pull down that bump um, by like sixty percent, seventy percent, and 
Also looking at the light direction outside. So we've got the light coming in this way. The other thing too is you probably want to get some more color in the shadows, a little more sky color, like a, a little bit more uh, blueness in the shadows. That'll help. Um, and then, yeah, just softening the shadows on the inside. Yeah, let's start there, and I think I think that'll get get us well on our way. All right, making our way through the A's, we got Annabelle. Uh, Annabelle, this looks great. I think this is. I think you. Can, I think you can call this done at this point. I think that um, it's super successful. I think in, in collaboration and with connection with the other two, um, it's uh, it's really really powerful stuff, and it's real. It's a real demonstration of strong lighting. I think if you put all three of these on your demo reels and in each one you just throw a, a little um, box up here and put in your reference image and just like maybe slowly uh, you know zoom in or like push the camera in um, and, and you just demonstrate each one uh, you've got a really really strong probably first uh, part of your demo reel really great stuff excellent um yeah excellent work all around i won't belabor it because it's just good it's just good and it looks great and you should throw it on your reel and you should be happy with it so great job ashley okay so i was looking at so somebody else i think there was where's their other reference at forgive me for just a second so this reference from jen uh which we'll talk about yours jen in just a second but i i do i was thinking about this when i looked at yours ashley and one of the areas that would be really nice, um, and, and the reason why I was looking at that was I was really liking um, how we were able to get some some more darkening um, in some of the corners and just like, it really kind of helps us zero in. So I think I think you could, because again, like the struggle with, with yours is it just, it feels like there's just like an overall wash on the lens. And I feel like we can, we can create a little bit more darkening overall um, and I think that that, especially around the edges, like something like this, I think would really help out a lot. Um, your characters are looking really cute. Uh, same thing with, with kind of similar to what we were talking about with Aaron's is that, um, you kind of want to watch out for these, like it's going to, it's going to take some finesse, but the arms are going super bright. And like some of this rice in here, uh, is looking very dark. Um, I look just like the cute, like these all, they're looking really great. I would also, um, for your own sake, watch out. I would I would watch out for this reflection in the eyes. See if you can eliminate that. Like maybe the object that's off camera that's reflecting in there. Maybe turn off its uh, visibility and reflections. Because it would be nice if these if these eyes were a little bit more pure and just uh, allowed them to be darker. Not I don't always um, give that type of note, but I think for these these. A, they're hero characters because they're our main focus. B, they're a little more stylized. I think it'd be really great to read like the dark big eye thing. Um, this character's looking really good. I think it's, it's cute that his feet are getting brighter as we go up. It, just, it feels like there's a hard edge on him, but I can't quite figure out why that is. Like it feels like he's ha he's blurry, but with a hard out outline inside the depth of field. So I would just maybe soften up his edge just a little bit. Um, and then there's a little bit of green in some of these carrots as we go up in here. I assume these are carrots. And I, I would, I would work to eliminate that with a little color correction. And man, this is looking really nice. I, lo I love like the, the soft fall off right around here. Um, I think that's looking really good just wonder if looking at this sushi roll i'm wondering if we can't add a little more subsurface to the sushi up there and then brighten up the rice itself yeah because like especially right in here on this side it's looking a little grayed down same one here just like a little like just if you can if you can crypto mat that just grab that rice and just lift just gamut up by like eight percent you can just see it kind of start to boost up i think that'll really help but yeah this is looking really cool i think it's just, i think i think you've got to start or something it'd be nice if this was part of a series of like a few different spots around the scene i think by the way oh i should mention this the orbs are looking really nice uh they're glowy but there's some detail in there just really really good overall <coughs> oh excuse me 
but really, really nice there. Okay, so let's move on to Clarissa and your Oreo piece, which looks just, it just looks great. It looks super dope. I think, I think that you're, I mean, in one iteration, you've really gone um, into a really nice level. There's, there's the lack of um, perfection in the cream. There's a little more specularity on the top. The table looks great. I think like if I was going to do anything at all, it would just be, um, look, mm, it would just be like on this one side of this one, it's looking like a little bit magenta, but God, that's too picky. That's it. I think, you know what? It's great. As I think Yang said this, I just want to eat them. The Oreos, they look delicious. I'm just wondering why they're not the double stuffed Oreos. Um, but no, these, this is great. I think this is, a, I think this is a beautiful demo reel worthy piece. Um, for somebody who like for, for kind of a photorealistic effect, I think it's great the way it is. Uh, if you're done with iterations, I'm going to, I will, and same thing with you, Annabelle, I will gladly put this in the, uh, lighting hall of fame stuff. Cause this is looking really great. You should be very, very proud of this one. Okay. So Donica, you are up next. So looking good. Um, I like the rim on the character. Um, a few things that, that would help darkening underneath the car here. I think the car is a little bit artificially lifted, especially underneath it. Uh, I feel like there would be more shadow and just darkening under there. These light bulbs look, feel a little bit ambient. I would I would take them down since they're not turned on. There's just like it feels like there's just kind of like a haze over top of them, and I bet you it's the refraction of some of this other stuff going on. But I would just take them down. They don't need to be um, because again they're over a super dark background, so they're kind of popping off more. I would take them down substantially. Um, the, there's light coming out of the doorway and that looks perfect. It just, it comes to an abrupt stop. Do you see, do you see what I'm saying? Like right there on the edge. I would just let it softly fade off as it kind of goes out. And you can you can push it a little further up here because it'd be nice if it kind of um, visually was behind the character in the, in the character's entirety. But this haze looks good. All that looks good. Character, I like the character lighting. Maybe a little less light on the front. Um, and then a little bit like this light on the edge. It might be tough to do this because it's so bright, but like try and match it to that cyan color. So just cool it off a little bit. But this one's looking really good. Good stuff. Emma. Uh, okay, let's take a look at your, we got your blueprint. Very cool. Um, love your draw over. This is so pretty. We've got some warm pockets of light in there. The Mylar balloons. Uh, really, really good stuff. Um, love your reference. This warm light is, is really nice. Like the kind of super warmth of it. This cool, like, look at, oh, this is so pretty. Like the way that um, you've got this desaturated color palette of light that just like, it. all of them do this. It's just like slowly moves around and slowly like, it's, it's just like, I, I call that like light just like meanders around the space. Like it just softly like just transitions from bright to dark to different greens and blues. Just really, really pretty, pretty reference. Um, and let's go back to your render. So the same, like it's looking really, really like it's a great start. Um, I think that in the way that, that we were seeing in the reference, I think that these lights can go more orange. Um, I think they can go, uh, I think they can do go much more saturated. Um, in terms of the light itself, I think that right now it's a little broad. I would really, really focus if I was, it's really cute scene. Uh, for you, I would really focus and I would, I would take this light up like position the light higher so it actually comes less into the room. Um, so it kind of just kind of falls maybe to here and then back and that will allow, um, it's like a pocket of light. The foreground of the character could go darker. It would just basically allow for like a rim light on the character. Um, because one of the things about when I, when I try and create a creepy environment, I try to create a lot of variation of light and dark. Um, Lots of pockets of, of bright and dark and bright and dark and bright and dark. Because you kind of want, I, I always think of it like I want the physical space to match the emotional uh, instability of the character and the unease of the character. So I want the light to feel uneasy. I want the light to vary a lot because I want their emotions to change a lot as we go through the scene. So um, I, would, I would look for more opportunity to find some light and dark value. I would make those lights more saturated. And then I would find a way to because this is clearly the object of the gaze right um clearly the focal point of the scene uh but but right now it's just there's not a lot going on with it so i would find a way to figure out a method of of focusing our light here it could be you know that that this light gets warmer and then all of a sudden we're able to get some like warm rim on that um just 
maybe it's 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 you know maybe there's you now there's more key on this side more rim on this side maybe the light haze doesn't like kind of fades off before it gets down here and now this part of the window down here is is super dark and we're able to light the character over top of that so finding a way to get our attention right there is going to be crucial for the shot but i love your paint over i love your direction um it's really going it's really going well so jen i mentioned this before um but same thing with yours great reference i just want to find more pockets of darkness like do you see how like in here like from here over it gets pretty super dark and here's a pocket there's a pocket there's a pocket even these characters back there and up there all pockets of darkness in yours it, it, there there's there's a little bit more lightness and i want to find a pocket of darkness here i want all of this to go a little bit darker um I want maybe like this interior space to go a little bit darker. I just want I want to I want to ground the image more with some more darker elements. Um, these are clearly our these characters are clearly our like center of attention. By the way, great staging with all this. It's really really cool. Um, I want to find a way. I'm wondering if there's like a better way. Like we could even like spotlight these characters somehow, um, and make them read off a little better. But the biggest thing is they are I'm wondering if we can make them a little bit less saturated um, and a little bit brighter and more contrasty. Oh, not like that. Yeah, and I think that would really kind of get those characters to pop off and read just a little bit better. And maybe, and like I said, maybe even like creating some more light that's specifically designed for them and make them our heroes and all the rest of these are just secondary kind of uh, background characters. I would also shy away from using lights like this that are just pretty neutral. I, I think that you're doing a really great thing with um, creating some saturation in the shot overall. Like I said, maybe maybe peel a little bit off the characters, but just like kind of pure blue lights like that, I would I would take those down. And then uh, go ahead and throw in a, if this is open to the to the outside, go ahead and throw in the sky back there. I think that'll help out a lot too. All right, next up we have uh, so we got Jordan, Cat, uh, Sooner, and Ubay. Okay, so let's jump to Jordan. All right, so we've got your reference here with Coco. Uh, it's kind of a similar note. I think I think we should find a way to create some more um, more darkness in the scene, like, and and I mean that by let's see. like there's there was two things I would work on. Number one is figuring out ways. Like, do you see how there's like a little bit of pocket of darkness there? Like his hair is, is dark, his mouth is dark. Um, there's areas that kind of ground the scene in, and and in her, there's really no area that gets that that has that like um, kind of grounding darkness, and I think a lot of that is because there's like an overall haze to the shot as a whole that I think we could peel back on. Um, in fact, for the next iteration, let's go ahead and pull that off, um, and then we'll 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 take a look, and, and we and if we add it in, we might add it in just behind her. Uh, reflection on the window looks great, by the way. Uh, I should point that out. Um, her eye white here, we want to make sure to keep that a little bit more in check. Um, tone that down slightly. Yeah. And then I wonder if we can't go a little bit. Looking at her skin tone overall. Hmm. I think you might be able to go a little warmer on her skin. It's tricky though. You know what? Let's let's pull off the haze and then we'll we'll take a look at it from there. I also think that um, you know what it is. Here it is. This back wall is being illuminated by warm sunlight, but the light feels cool. Right? I think I think her skin tone. Maybe it can go a little warmer, but definitely the light on the on the environment can go warmer. It's like more uh, warm sunlight um, coming in there, so I think that'll help that that a lot. All right, cat, <laughs> very cool. The eyes are definitely fun now. Um, I think that there is a uh, lot of saturation 
going on, I would pull back the saturation a little bit in here uh, on his tie. Yeah, on this tie in here. Um, I'm wondering if the ambient occlusion might be applied a little bit too heavily, because that's something I definitely did early on when I was working with ambient occlusion, is I like added it 100% in there because it was great. Um, I would maybe, like what I found is that whatever the ambient occlusion render is, if you multiply it in or you add it in by about 20%, that's usually a good place to start. Um, let's see if we can get a little bit more contrast in the smoke. I think the, the overall level of it is pretty good, but let's see if we can just push up a, a, some of the bright, because you want a little bit of shaping in here too, so maybe just a little bit of the brights in that. In some areas, like, let's start with that and then create some because yeah, you kind of don't want it to be all that bright, but like, basically you just want to create like more variation in there. And so it's not like one consistent tone. You want it to feel like it's passing through, like the smoke is passing through light as well. Um, and you can do it better than that. That was some, that was just a janky, <laughs> a janky quick mock-up. Um, but I, th I think the light shape is really good. It just, it feels, it just feels a little crunchy to me, um, in that like there's a, there's just like a like a jagged edge here, um, that feels a little bit low res and it feels like a little bit uh, cranked up contrast. So, um, and with that contrast comes that added, that added uh, saturation in some of those areas. But yeah, I would, um, and you mentioned changing a shirt tone to uh to get rid of some of this i think that would be fun i think you should maybe, maybe try making like a black t-shirt under there and just seeing where that goes um but yeah this is coming together really well you got your new setup you're rocking and rolling you are good to go so looking forward to the next iteration there uh sooner um really cool stuff i love 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 some of your reference images so let's take a look at those um i love like this this kind of overall glow that we're seeing out of out of these lights, it's just like you, it, the the atmosphere feels very, um, like you can feel the moisture in the air a little bit there, and I think that's really really cool. Um, love this one, like such a great indication of of window um, window light. Like there's the variation we're seeing, the density of the curtains, we're seeing some uh, reflection inside. We see the other windows, we see um, you know these little vents on the ceiling, lights there. Uh, you get you get an indication of life inside those windows a little bit, and that's really really great. Um, for yours, I think we can we can add that variation. For me, I, I sometimes just throw like simple geometry in there to make it feel like there's a couch or like a bookcase or something. Um, you don't necessarily need curtains, but um, I would I would uh, put some objects in there to break up and, and create some shadow to make it feel like there's something back there. Additionally, you want to vary up the color the way that, that this one is varied with all these different colors within the same building. I think you can do that too by, by varying up the colors. Uh, this Apollo street sign is nice, but let's take a look at that versus this. Like this is, is now white and then all of the light coming out of it is that kind of, that kind of um, cyan -y color. So I think you can go brighter with this and make it like white and glowy and then you can add some diffusion overall to the scene. Uh, it'd be great to get a sky in there as well. That That's taking up a big chunk of the image. So let's try and do that. Um, yeah, the way that, like even just like a simple sky like this would be good. And then, yeah, you can see inside these windows too. You can see exit signs, light sources, things like that. Um, that stuff would be, would be very cool in there. And then, uh, also getting some reflections in these dark windows, the way that we're seeing, you know, uh, the Apollo being reflected in there and some reflections in these would be really nice. Um, same thing down here. But yeah, I think that would be a really good first step. And then, um, oh, we can, we can leave it at that. We can add some more, uh, diffusion overall to the scene, uh, in future iterations. And I would uh, darken this wall a little bit too. But yeah, I think that would be a really nice. Uh, nice step towards the next next iteration. And last but not least, we have Ubaid. Um, love the pat. I love the shape of like the kind of the painted look of these trees. I think that's really cool. Um, I want to see more shadow underneath them. 
because right now they if feel like it doesn't feel like they're casting kind of a full shadow up underneath here um Nice variation coming across the front of this building. Like really subtle, but really nice. And then I think that you can, th this brightness of the ground is a little much. It's a little bit extreme, but I do like that it's coming across. So I would just take that down a little bit. And then for the girl, I, I wonder if we can get a little more darkness in her, her core value too. Not much, just like a little bit more in there just to kind of help ground her um, because right now she's a little bit, uh, her, her, her levels are a little bit lifted and I think we can ground her into the space a little bit more, kind of like that. But yeah, this is looking great. I think this looks really nice. I also just realized this is, this is, this is us, but, uh, if you could just like nudge that door frame over a little bit you could just see like a little bit of the brick creeping through there. Uh, and that's not great. And then for the door, I would make that solid. It's it's got this. It's kind of a weird vertical paneling there. I think you can just make that a solid door. Um, and then additionally, and yeah. All right. So that is all for today. I think this is uh, yeah coming together well. So just like a little bit more darkness and maybe some more aerial perspective back there. All right. That's it for today. Uh, once again. Stay tuned for Wednesday and uh, happy lighting, everyone. Can't wait to see what we get tomorrow.